In this video, we will be going over the water supply for our two-story home edition. And I do plan on making other videos related to the two-story edition. And as a viewer, you can go ahead and let us know specifically if you want more details on a particular item. And I will try to make those videos sooner than later. And an example of one of those videos that I plan on making would be how we relocated the water supply, which which might be something else you're going to need to do on a project like this. And I do have a lot of scenes in this video, so I am going to be motoring through it a little faster than normal to provide you with as many views as I possibly can. Starting with the gate valve, the main shutoff valve coming into the house, this would be the water supply, cold water supply, to your municipal services. And then we're going to come in here and feed the rest of the house along with a hose bib there just in case you want to water the outside yard or clean your car. And then we will not be cutting the framing plates. Instead, we are going to be dropping the ceiling in the closet here so we can have the pipes a little bit lower. And we are going to tee off of this with a half inch line. This line here is three quarters. Now this line might need to be larger depending upon the size of your home. And with this line here, we are going to feed the shower and the toilet. So again, this is going to be cold water. And in the second part of the video, I will be providing you with what these items look like in the wall framing or floor framing. So the cold water is going to be coming from the bottom. The hot water is going to be coming from above. And the line that feeds the shower is also going to feed the sink over here. So this will be the master bedroom, bathroom, sink. And for our cold water, again, we are going to come off of this line here with a half inch line to feed the sink and then overhead for the hot water. And in this example, I'm going to have the cold water feed through the attic because I won't be able to drill through the doubler at the stair head out. And hopefully I will be going over that in a future video. So here's how this connection kind of gets twisted and turned together. We're going to have a 90 here with a street 90, come into a three quarter T and then come off with a half inch line. So again, three quarter inch line coming in to feed the rest of the house and the hot water heater. And we are going through the scissor trusses here. And here's a nice view of the line coming through the attic here all the way over to here. And then here it is going to tee off with a three quarter line in both directions. And this will be the cold water to supply the rest of the existing house. This will be the hot water to supply the rest of the existing house. So let's go ahead and head over to the water heater. And here we're using a tankless water heater. And you can see where the cold water is finally going in to the water heater where it will come out hot on the other side. And then we're going to have two half inch lines come over and feed the wash machine. And then these lines right here will feed the rest of the upstairs addition. And of course, another view of the lines here, how they're all connecting to the other bathroom components or fixtures. Next up, let's go ahead and take a look at the bottom of the water heater, hot water. I got this mark to represent hot in some areas or the hot water lines just in case I got confused while doing the drawing. And the half inch lines will come through the wall framing under the stairs and then will pop out around the wall framing because this area here will not be part of the living space. And the hot water will usually be located on the left, cold water on the right. And of course a view of the wash machine drain line here, two inch pipe connecting to a two inch and then a one and a half inch vent going through the roof, a backside view here of the water supply going around the plumbing vent pipe and the wall framing stud. And you could always stay in the wall here as long as you move the pipe over. Just wanted to provide you with something else you could do here. And that's usually what I do in my videos. I point out things that might or might not work. And another one of those things might be the vent here. In this example here, the vent is going to come up a little bit, 45 over, come up, and then go through this bay here. However, you could always move the water supply pipes over on either side and then come straight up here with a vent. And I will try to make another video on the vent and the gas line also. 
Next up, let's go ahead and take a look at where the pipes needed to be dropped down a little bit so that they wouldn't be sticking out through the roof. And I will provide you with another example of that here in a little bit. And then the three quarter inch line will reduce to a half inch to feed the master bathroom and then reduce down a half inch to feed the other bathroom. And we're not going to reduce the three quarter inch pipe down until we get to the toilet to avoid the old cold water flush while someone's taking a shower. And for those of you who aren't familiar with that, that would be when somebody is taking a shower and then somebody flushes the toilet and then all of a sudden the water changes temperature real fast and is usually quite irritating to the person in the shower. So hopefully this will eliminate that. And if you're not worried about that, you can probably run a half inch line for this particular pipe here. And of course, the cold water is going to come down and feed the sink and the toilet. And then the hot water over here for the sink, we're going to come over here. Hot water will feed the bath and shower unit. Cold water here. So some nice views of it there. Go ahead and go down and take a look at it here and how these connections right here will work. So dropping down, and again, you can get a fitting for this that will reduce down. You won't need to get a reducer. And I just wanted to show you here why we needed to raise the cold water up over the hot water to make the plumbing for this particular design work. Next up, let's go ahead and take a look at the floor framing to provide us with a view of the pipes that are going to be in the floor framing. This one here will be going around the structural beam. And if you notice in this video, it's designed to eliminate some of the structural destruction that can be made by a plumber in some of the what I would consider to be important framing components that hold everything together. And of course, a view here of the plumbing in the closet that will require a drop ceiling here. Next up, let's go ahead and install the floor sheathing to provide you with an example of how these pipes are the only ones that are going to be coming out of the floor to provide us with cold water for our second story addition. Everything else is going to be overhead and then dropping down. And I would imagine this design would give you an idea of how some of the other plumbing materials besides copper might work also. Next up, let's go ahead and add some wall framing and then take a look at how the shower valve in the master bedroom might work. Again, the hot water dropping down. How the toilet is going to come through this wall 90 and then tie into a half inch T here. Again, half inch line here. And you could always run a three quarter inch line to here to this T if you're worried about flushing the toilet while someone's in the shower to reduce that problem. I would like to say eliminate that problem, but who knows? Might not. And again, our hot water view from above. Hot water is feeding overhead coming down to the sink. Now I left this particular pipe sticking up so that I could provide you with an idea of what I was talking about, how it would be sticking out through the roof if you didn't drop it down. And you could always lower this and have it run into the ceiling framing and then pop it up in another section. Leave that up to you. And of course, a view of what this one looks like with it being stepped down and of course, a view there without the lumber. Again, the hot water dropping down. The cold water is going around the beam. And I'm not really worried about this because the cabinet floor will cover this up once we install our bathroom vanity cabinet. So another view of it there. A view from above, hot water coming in, tying into here, going this way. And then the cold water, of course. So the vent pipe for the toilet and the sink, vent for the bathtub, and then another view of how all of these pipes are connecting together and how the shower valve is fitting nice into the little bay that we made there. Another thing I would have mentioned in the video about framing the walls and then the hot and the cold water for the sink and then the cold water for the toilet. This is all half inch. And you can see here where the pipes were moved back a little bit so that we could get our cold water pipes in the wall there. 
and a view from the backside along with our clean out. Clean outs are always sincerely appreciated by people who have to come later and run a snake, a drainage cleaning snake through your pipes. And I want to end this video by pointing out a mistake that I made. And that's the fact that I had this angled a little too high. It just barely needs to be tilted. And the reason for that would be the possibility if there was too much water coming out of here, it could actually pull the water out of the toilet. And if enough water is pulled out, then you're going to have sewer gases coming into your living space and you're not going to want that. And of course, always check with your local building department to verify all of the information in my videos and other videos. And as always, if you learned something or enjoyed the video, feel free to let us know by hitting the thumbs up button or leaving a comment in the comment area.